Flow versus Apex, declarative versus programmatic, two age-old rivalries in the Syrian sports ecosystem. Both have their pros and cons and are respectively very good at what they do. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, excelling in different areas. These are all the things that you've probably heard before. But what happens when you opt for the declarative approach, favoring flow builder over Apex coding? Are certain types of flows better suited for individuals with a more technical and mindset, such as developers? Want to find out? Be sure to keep watching. Just before we start, thank you to Andrew Cook for the article that inspired this video. So, if you're new here, we'll be talking all about Salesforce Flow in this video. Salesforce Flow Builder is a tool that allows you to create automated workflows and processes in Salesforce. Flows can automate tasks such as sending emails, creating records, updating records, launching other flows, and sending notifications. They can be triggered by a variety of events such as a user clicking a button, a record being created, a field being updated, or a date being reached. If you'd like to learn more about the tool in detail, be sure to check out our bumper flow playlist in the description below. Before we move forward, it's important to keep in mind that this comparison depends purely on your business and your org setup. You could be a solo admin with a small org, so you may do some things that a developer may do. On the other hand, you may be an admin as a part of a huge Salesforce team with many other admins and developers, in which case, your responsibilities when it comes to flow may be more limited. With that in place, let's get into the specifics focusing on the different kinds of flows and whether you'd be more likely to use them as a Salesforce admin or a Salesforce developer. Okay, starting off with screen flows. Screen flows are a tool that allows users to create interactive, guided experiences for users within the Salesforce platform, typically used for automating processes, collecting data, and guiding users through a specific task using a visual drag and drop interface. A screen flow could be used to guide a sales representative through a step-by-step -step process for capturing and qualifying leads, presenting them with input fields and choices at each stage. Because screen flows are fairly straightforward to configure, they are often one of the first flows a Salesforce professional will build. That's why screen flows are something most Salesforce admins will be proficient in building. One point to admins. Next, let's take a look at record triggered flows. Record triggered flows are automated workflows triggered by changes to records in Salesforce, such as creating, updating, or deleting records. You may have a record triggered flow that fires when an opportunity record is updated in order to update a field on the related account record. Record triggered flows are the most common type of flow used in Salesforce and have similar workings to that of a workflow rules and process builder. So although they can become extremely complex in some instances, they will still mainly be more in the admin camp than in the developer camp. Another point to admins. Next on our list is Scheduled Triggered Flows. Scheduled Triggered Flows are those that fire at specified times or intervals, allowing for automated actions on a schedule. A Scheduled Triggered Flow could run daily to check for overdue tasks and send reminders to assigned users if any tasks are past their due dates. For example, imagine a scenario where a company needs to manage tasks and assignments. With a Scheduled Triggered Flow, they can set up an automated process that runs daily, checking for any overdue tasks. If any tasks are found to be past their due dates, the flow can automatically send reminders to the assigned users, prompting them to take action and complete the task promptly. These are probably slightly more technical than Record Triggered Flows as you will be dealing with things like batches of records, which is something that developers tend to be much more familiar with than admins. First point to developers. Our penultimate flow in this video is the platform event triggered flow. Workflows triggered by events that occur in the Salesforce platform enable real-time responses to various actions or conditions. When a high priority support case is logged in Salesforce, a platform event triggered flow could immediately notify the support team and escalate the case to ensure prompt resolution. For example, imagine a scenario where a company is using Salesforce to manage support cases from customers. With a platform event triggered flow, they can automate responses to such cases in real time. The flow could immediately alert the support team, potentially via email or chat, and escalate the case for prompt resolution within Salesforce. This automation not only speeds up response times, but also helps meet service level agreements and deliver excellent customer support. 
These are one of the most technical types of flows you can build as they require knowledge of integrations and platform events. And because of this, you'd be more likely to encounter one as a Salesforce developer. We're now two for two for admins and developers. Our last flow on this list is the auto launch flow. Auto launch flows are flows that are triggered by other processes or external systems and can play a crucial role in streamlining business operations and ensuring data accuracy within Salesforce. These auto-launched flows are initiated without requiring direct user interaction, executing seamlessly behind the scenes. For example, a company may operate an e-commerce platform integrated with Salesforce to manage sales and inventory when a new order is placed on the e-commerce website or when a product is restocked in the inventory system, it's essential to ensure that this information is promptly reflected in Salesforce to maintain accurate records and enable timely decision making. This is where auto launch flows come into play. They can be configured to listen for incoming signals or triggers from external systems such as the e-commerce platform and automatically perform predefined actions within Salesforce based on these triggers. For example, when a new order is placed, the auto launch flow could update relevant Salesforce records, such as creating new sales opportunity, updating inventory levels, and notifying the appropriate sales representatives. These type of flows can be quite technical to configure when dealing with cases such as the one I just mentioned, leaning them more toward a developer than an admin. Finally, let's take a look at testing and how that fares for both admins and developers. To test a record triggered flow, you could simulate the creation of a new record in Salesforce and verify the flow correctly performs the intended actions such as sending notifications or updating records. To test an auto launch flow, on the other hand, you could simulate the triggering event from the external system and verify that the flow correctly performs the desired actions in Salesforce, such as updating inventory levels and creating new customer records. Testing is something that developers have been doing since software development began. In Salesforce Apex, code cannot be simply written in a production environment and instead must be written in a sandbox environment and then pushed into production with a passing test. This is not the case with flows which can, but shouldn't, be created directly into production. This is why, for this one, we've put testing more towards a developer's skill set. It isn't so much that admins can't write efficient tests for their flows, it's more that developers are preconditioned to think like this to begin with. Developers have scored high on this one, but it's important to remember that each situation with flow in your org is going to be different. The problem you're trying to solve will ultimately determine how complex your flow is. You may need a record triggered flow, which has a large number of steps with loop and assignment elements to boot. In this case, this is going to be a lot more technical than outlined above. On the flip side, you may have an auto launch flow that is very simple to configure, in which case this will be a lot less technical than outlined earlier. It's important to bear in mind that this is merely a starting point. No two people are the same and no two orgs are the same. But there's no hiding from the fact that some types of flows are just more technical and can be more complicated than others. So be sure to take your time and work out whether an admin or developer would be better suited for a specific scenario in yours.